All right, so uh, here we are. We got about a week out from World Championships. We're getting our last uh, decent session in, Phil and I here. Uh, we're gonna do a flat 400, followed by a beer 400, a beer 800, and then another beer 400. See how we're feeling, then maybe throw some 200s in the end. I'm just gonna take two minutes around between the whole thing. Uh, most of our beer mall training is done with non-alcoholic beer, especially when it's a weeknight like tonight. We've got some schoolwork to do. Can't be drunk every weeknight, so we do a lot of stuff with water, a lot of stuff with non-alcoholic beer. Things like eating a lot of watermelon, eating a massive pasta dish, and then having a couple water or non-alcoholic chunks to get that stomach stretched. Makes you feel a little better on race day. Apart from that, it's just regular running training, getting a fit, because you got, still got to run fast. You just need to settle a bit. First time we did it, uh, it was just for fun between seasons. Uh, university track and cross country teams just do it for fun, kind of celebrate the end of the season. Um, we did it first time last April, and then it got really big this time last year, so we started doing it a little bit more. Now this sport has just come out of nowhere. It's almost like a Red Bull crash dice. We're the first generation of it getting big. So yeah, it's pretty cool to be on the forefront of it. Nobody really knows how to train for it right now, so we're kind of experimenting as we go. It's kind of cool to be involved in this sport. Last year I was the youngest in the fields. Um, the, my biggest competition next week is Corey Gallagher he's from Manitoba. He's 27 or 28. Most of the guys, uh, there's actually quite a wide range. I'm one of the younger guys and the guy who's ranked third going into next week is 43. So there's, uh, he's been doing beer mouse for like 25 years. Like he had the world record for about 10 years. So it's, uh, it's quite a wide range. So it's pretty fun to kind of race against people from different generations. And, uh, how did you feel when you broke the world record? It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. I finished the race and uh, I heard my splits on the first two laps, but I didn't know what I was at going to the last lap. So I was running the whole way thinking, maybe I can get it, maybe I can get it. And then as soon as I crossed and then I finished, our roommates yelled at the time, I was just pretty fired up about it. Uh, when I first started talking to Brooks, I thought it was a perfect fit. Brooks is awesome in the sense that they're, they obviously want dedicated athletes, but they're also all about kind of like, building runners up and uh, it's more of a lifestyle sort of thing so we, tra we train hard but we also don't take ourselves too seriously so Brooks goes really well with the beer mall as well as with me because run happy is their slogan so it's all about having a good time and doing the best you can. How intoxicated do you feel after running a beer mile with alcoholic beer obviously? Um, I'd say immediately after don't feel anything at all about 20 minutes later just kind of comes on like a wave sort of thing. Uh, we usually will do our cool down and we'll start running and then halfway through you get a little, little bit of a buzz going and then after that it's kind of your choice if you want to refuel the fire or not, keep drinking or kind of call it a night. Yeah, it'll wear off eventually if you stop drinking after. So it's next Tuesday, it's December 1st. Uh, it's just one race, one shot of glory sort of thing. So it's just five minutes, five minutes of pain and see if you can win the race. Be able to tell it's not full. <laughs>